Okay, that's good, because I'm not sure that at the end you will be also willing to clap. <laughs> okay, so I would like to thank Artyom for this invitation, which has uh, this extra bonus uh, of this uh, incredibly nice uh, little workshop, which I enjoyed very much. So, uh, the title of my, uh, that I gave to Artyom a few weeks ago was uh, rather generic. I thought uh, that it was better maybe to focus a little bit more on the very subject of this uh, workshop, namely materials. And so we will uh, discuss a little bit how one can simulate the nucleation of crystal phase and uh, the growth of crystal phases. And uh, this is a classical uh, uh, picture of the so we start uh, discussing the process of nucleation, which is one of the most amazing uh, uh, phenomena that I know. So you have a liquid which is very disordered at a given temperature. All, all the little atoms, they put themselves together and form a beautiful crystal structures. The description of the phenomena of, uh, of uh, the standard description of the phenomena on nucleation is based on so-called classical nucleation theory that uh, in, in the in classical nucleation theory you assume that you are in the liquid state and there you have a fluctuations in the new phase the fluctuations for simplicity we assume to be spherical so there will be a volume term and this will favor the new phase which has a lower free energy but uh, you have uh, at the same time to pay a cost which is related to the surface because you have to build an interface between the new phase and the old one. This term will grow like the surface, so this term is a bulk term, grows as r to the cube, this term grows as r squared, so for small r's, so for small uh, um, seeds of the new phase, the, uh, the uh, the, this term will be negligible and so you have to start building the surface and then you create a barrier and once this critical barrier is achieved the nucleation, the, 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 the little seed will grow to fill up the whole space and, and, and the, the rate at which this seed grows is given by this kind of transition state theory. So this is the background, and we want to not to use this formula, uh, and we want to be able to study the system. What is the problem? The problem is this barrier can be very large, especially in the case in which you are homogeneous nucleation, that means don't have nucleation centers, and uh, the time it takes uh, for the uh, fluctuations which goes over the barrier can be very long and uh, exceed the time scale of your simulation. And so we are faced, if you want to study this problem, to, with a well-known problem of uh, time scale in molecular dynamics, uh, mm. which uh, uh, limits uh, the power of the method. So, um, so and one of the reasons, of course, is the press. So we have to do something about that. Uh, and we have to do something. I mean, it has been good uh, in a sense that I'm, I'm at the end of this uh, day because many concepts have been already introduced uh, by previous speakers uh, and uh, already Artem has given to us the idea that the potential energy surface of a real system is indeed a very complicated object uh, with very many minima and many different uh, uh, length scale and also associated time scale. And if you look, uh, I see this is uh, a cartoon representation of, okay, of, of uh, uh, imaginary uh, uh, potential energy surface, uh, then uh, you see that there is no clear uh, pattern of transition state. There are many transition states, and you have also many ways of going from A to B. So, if you want to solve this problem, you face uh, with uh, two, uh, two jobs. One is starting from here in a reasonable uh, computer time, uh, going into B. Huh? 
And uh, so that's the first thing you want to... Uh, uh, and the other thing is, of, of course, uh, again, another thing that Artiomas discussed, uh, the, uh, the possibility of, of describing all the complexity in simple terms. Okay, so, of course, uh, this, uh, this problem is not new, and there are many, many, many solutions proposed. And, uh, we, of course, we take something from many of these things. Our method is called metadynamics. And, uh, as I said, we want to achieve two results. Uh, describe, in simple terms, uh, the, uh, the system, and at the same time, uh, explore the surface. So, how do we describe the system? So, we introduce uh, a small set uh, of uh, collective variable, or order parameter. This is the city of Landau. So, I don't have to elaborate uh, uh, this, uh, this concept. Uh, so, the, the, this parameter, this order parameter, will be all collective. All, they, they, they have tant, uh, many names. We, we call it collective vari variable, which depends on a small number. Or, which it depends on, on the atomic coordinate. And the other thing that we are going to do, we focus our attention on the free energy surface uh, rather than the potential energy surface. So we, from the start, uh, we include entropic contribution to the, to the system. And uh, uh, our main, uh, uh, main focus will be really at a uh, finite temperature system, a system uh, soft condensed matter, if you wish. But also to, okay. So these are some examples of collective variable, and in fact we have used also the uh, fingerprints in one of, <laughs> you know, as, as a collective variable. So that's uh, we we'll, we'll see a few of these in, in the coming. The, the free energy surface uh, is nothing else but uh, another way of representing. Uh, uh, the probability distribution that our collective variable has a certain value and uh, 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 minima in the free energy surface will correspond to maxima in the, in the probability distribution. How do those, these things are? I always show the same thing, but uh, this is a simple example. Small protein, alanine the peptide, which has many degrees of freedom and, and, and uh, but we represent the free energy as a function of these two dihedral angle, which define the conformation of this molecule. And uh, you see the free energy surface uh, as a function of this variable uh, uh, as a different minima. And I hope this time it works. And the minima will correspond to different conformers, so you can calculate the relative uh, population of this conformer, and so you neglect all the other irrelevant uh, degrees of freedom, and you have, uh, in this case, a clear picture of the behavior of this uh, little peptide. Okay, so how are we going to explore it? Uh, so in the first formulation, our idea was uh, rather simple, so we, we thought that we could uh, simply uh, deposit, uh, wherever we go, a uh, repulsive uh, Gaussian potential, which is function of the collective variable, which prevents the system from coming back uh, to, uh, to where it was. So we fill, uh, we fill all, the, all the minima, and the, the, the nice property of this dynamics uh, is that uh, asymptotically it, it, uh, it tends uh, the bias, uh, the sum of the, of the, of the, of the Gaussian cell deposit uh, is equal and opposite to the free energy cell. So we get uh, the map, uh, the lay of the land. This is a, a, a more recent, a more sophisticated version, which we call metadynamics. I don't spend much uh, time on that. Uh, just to tell you that uh, in this uh, new way of doing things, uh, we have uh, a boosting parameter, gamma, so this, this differs from the old way that uh, the height of the Gaussian is not constant, uh, but uh, it uh, decreases. So if I visited according to a special law, if we visited already position in the free energy space, uh, the height of the Gaussian. Huh? So we will not spend time where he has already been. Uh, the, there is a parameter, 
which become gamma, boosting parameter, then the property of this theory is done. Okay, I use my property of this theory. It says still that the bias is equal to minus the free energy. Now there is a constant. But uh, a nice feature which illuminates uh, the real character metadynamics uh, is that uh, if I look at the fluctuations of the variable in the canonical ensemble, uh, uh, they are related to what I do with this uh, ensemble by this uh, relation. So if I change gamma, I can make the fluctuations larger, larger and larger. And uh, so this is the usual movie. OK, so this is shown here. So if gamma is equal to 1, I'm just uh, not doing anything. I'm in the canonical ensemble. And uh, my system remains uh, for, uh, trapped here. Yeah, you know, you have the magic finger. Uh, oh, the tip here. Oh, OK. Thank you. You see why I'm a theoretician. Oh, by by in, uh, increasing gamma, I increase the fluctuations, and so I get the probability of going over, over this barrier. Gamma, then I, I, I go more and more. Gamma infinity is what we did with Lyo 10 years ago. OK. This will come back, uh, will return. So let's go now to the idea first of simulating uh, uh, nucleation, in particular, particular homogeneous nucleation. And uh, now if we want to do uh, metadynamics, we are confronted with the problem of choosing uh, the uh, collective variable. And of course, uh, we, we, you want to be, choose uh, the variable as generic as possible in such a way that you don't bias uh, the final answer. Uh, first, uh, it will be kind of a classical way of uh, doing things. So we introduce uh, the so-called uh, Steiner parameter, and, uh, which is uh, you sit on an atom and look at its environment, uh, and essentially you measure whether it's crystal-like or, or not. Uh, and uh, this, uh, this uh, Oops, uh, you see. Ah. OK, so here we go. Uh, I'll use my finger. <laughs> OK, and uh, this uh, uh, distinguishes very well uh, between uh, the liquid uh, and the solid. And then we can do the simulation. We can do the simulation by uh, choosing different uh, temperature. So I can quench, I have a liquid, I quench it, uh, quench it to this fraction, 20% below the melting temperature. It's a beautiful, we see the classical nucleation theory being brought out, a nice nucleus that grows, and the critical size is about 200 atoms. This is the Leonard Jones, so hard. And, uh, and uh, if we keep uh, uh, cooling, then the situation uh, becomes a bit more complicated, and uh, we cool even more. It looks uh, more like uh, a spinodal uh, instability than a real, than a real uh, nucleation. And, and this, this is an important concept, because often uh, we, we, we all have done, I've done it many times, because of this problem of time scale, we have uh, to see something we try to increase the parameter, to increase the parameter, increase the pressure, increase the temperature, so the things occur before your budget uh, uh, evaporates. And, uh, but uh, you see, this occurs on a time scale which you can do in the simulation. So if you were to believe uh, this, uh, this thing, you would get it all wrong. Because that's not really spinodal, what you want to see, you want to see that one. So that's a warning. That, that. As I said, uh, we want to see the phenomena without, uh, say, knowing anything. One would like to have a piece of liquid and then put it there in the freezer and see what comes out. So one useful uh, variable 
is the potential energy which have used uh, and uh, again we we don't have uh, much time to uh, don't don't look at the formula the free energy as a function of the potentials a real free energy so you have energy minus kbt the logarithm of the density of state so that's a way of calculating the density of state and uh, if you look uh, at uh, at uh, at the partition function, for those of you who like statistical mechanics, you can write uh, the partition function as a function of this gamma parameter. And as I said, since you enhance the energy fluctuations, uh, you, go, you can regulate uh, the thing. And so it's kind, kind of uh, inducing a, a, quite a critical behavior. So the average energy doesn't change. But, the, uh, but uh, the fluctuations increase. So uh, first order phase transition become artificially almost second order. And, and that's uh, what you see. Uh, that's a movie. It's not such a beautiful movie, but you see, without doing anything, the, you get the uh, layer of FCC crystal emerging spontaneously from, from the thing. OK. So then we became ambitious uh, and we said, OK, why don't we do uh, a precipitation from solution, which is one of the most uh, uh, energy alone. Uh, unfortunately, oh, I mean, it's not a surprise. It didn't work. It didn't work because you have a slow variable, which you have to take into account. Because if you take, uh, in this case, a sodium chloride in solution, you have to separate uh, uh, sodium and chlorine from the water, otherwise you don't see, you don't see the thing. So, that, that, so for this reason, we introduced a new variable, and again, this is the Landau land. We went, uh, it was not, uh, not uh, uh, so we, we use as collective variable this gradient of the density of uh, sodium chloride. So if uh, the solution is uniform, this is zero if uh, there, is a, there is an interface. Huh? So that's uh, the term that's used in Landau's theory uh, of phase transition to uh, punish the fluctuations in the order parameter. Uh, and this works very nice. Um, we have power. And now, we did uh, the simulation. Um, oh, that's beautiful. So that's rock salt. That's nothing fantastic. Huh? We had a trivial rock salt. But then we had another thing. So we had the surprise. Huh? And uh, here we go. Word site, bravo. Uh, and why is it word site? When, when uh, Federico uh, Giverti, who, who is the student uh, who is doing these calculations, wrote to me, I said, no, uh, Federico, sorry, you made uh, a gross mistake. It's not possible. <coughs> but indeed, so talking of strange salt, that's also pretty strange. Uh, why is it? Why is it because uh, the, the, <coughs> the interface uh, between water and sodium chloride, uh, rock salt is pretty lousy from the point of view of water. Instead, the, the wurzite uh, fits very well, very nicely with the interface. And so this is a case of, I don't know whether I'm quoting it right, also a step rule. So we compare the energy of formation of the nuclei, the nucleus as a function of the radius, so <coughs> a low radius of this term, surface term, will be dominant. So the difference of interfa free, interfacial free energy will drive the system to first towards uh, toward the world site. And later on, of course, uh, it will, the rock salt will prevail. And so that, that's, uh, uh, that's uh, what it is. We didn't put it in. It came out beautifully. OK. So, so that's a bulk term, which is, of course, very much in favor 
of, 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 of the rock salt, and then we got here. Okay. Uh, okay, but there are the other thing uh, from the material science point of view. Uh, so we had a few examples of a nucleation, homogeneous nucleation. So we can produce crystals. Uh, uh, we could use uh, the method of uh, Artyom, or we can get it from solution or whatnot. But uh, the, the, what determines the property of, 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 of a material? Huh? Of course, a chemical composition, the crystal structure. And of course, it's important. And earlier on, uh, the talk on the organic molecule uh, uh, underlined uh, the problem that uh, in the pharma industry uh, is, uh, is very much uh, uh, debated about the various polymorph, uh, not only for, for, uh, for patent reasons, but also for, uh, for the physical properties. Say, if one polymorph is not soluble, it's not easy to be done. It cannot be denied. The defect, of course, we know that they play an important role, but it's much less, uh, uh, much less uh, uh, thought of is uh, the crystal shape of a crystal. And that's what I, I, I would like to discuss. And uh, uh, crystal shape is important in industrial processes. If microcrystals have uh, uh, funny shapes, uh, they will not be easy to handle. On the other end, uh, there are cases in which drugs uh, with the same uh, crystal structure, uh, the same chemical composition, have a rather different activity depending on, uh, on the shape of the microcrystal in which uh, they crystallize. For instance, in this case, uh, if, uh, if the, the thing is crystallized in, uh, in needle-like uh, structures, uh, this uh, drug is more easily absorbed by the membrane of the cell. So, can we? Eh? So, since we have in mind uh, this application to to organic system, we took an organ typical organic molecule, urea, which is not a great drug, but uh, it has, uh, from the point of view of study. Uh, uh, important, uh, useful properties. Uh, so it crystallizes in water. It has a fast kinetics, and, uh, we, and that's important because we're doing this work in collaboration with an experimental group. Uh, has a simple crystal, uh, crystal structure and has no polymorphs uh, that we know. Of. Possibly we, we discovered there might be another polymorph, but not easy to. Okay. So this problem was already, uh, so this is the group of people with, which, with whom I'm collaborating. So Salvalaglio on this project is the main uh, uh, driving force. Uh, professor Mazzotti is a professor of ETH and is doing the experiment together with Thomas Fetta. Huh? Uh, this problem uh, has been studied in the past by a group in Australia and found that uh, Urea crystallizing from water forms uh, this needle like. And they repeat the, the experiment, of course, uh, they find uh, the same thing. Okay, why, why is this so? It is so because uh, when in the presence of water, there are two dominant surfaces here the 0, 0, 1 and the 1, 1, 0. 1 grows very fast and one grows very slow, and it's the slow variable which dominates. Uh, and uh, uh, so we do classical MD uh, uh, with the usual kind. Uh, I will not spend much time on that. Uh, uh, just to say it's not an ab huh? uh, kind of calculation. So what do we do? We assume. Uh, now we want to see how, how the crystal grows. Huh? So uh, the grows, it's related to, to the speed with which the surface grows. So we will not have a, a real crystal light, but we'll uh, start uh, with a slab. No, we start, no. Uh, oh. we start with a slab, which is uh, immersed in a, 
in a solution, a concentrated, super saturated solution of uh, urea in water, what I am not sure, and uh, again, I, I use uh, for analysis purposes a local, local uh, order parameter, we will say, which can measure the degree of crystallinity. So in this uh, convention, blue means uh, crystal-like uh, and uh, red means uh, uh, liquid-like. And we do the simulation for the 001, and we see that the roof, it grows continuously, and this is the 001. Instead, the 110 has a different behavior, absorbs the little molecules, comes here, and then poof, there is a, an increase in the number. And, and the reason is the mechanism of growth is rather different. In the case of uh, of, uh, of the 001, you see this surface has already positions here where it's easy for a, for a new molecule uh, to come here. Instead here, the process, the two-dimensional process has to be nucleated. Here, here you can see from this paper a uh, uh, nucleus of this surface. So that's once it's no nucleated, uh, that's this, this, uh, it, it covers uh, the surface. Okay. So we understand the difference. Now, can we control the shape? As we said, it would be nice to. One, one simple way of controlling, we see a little bit more elaborate ways of doing it, uh, is to add uh, some uh, extra molecule. That's called burette, uh, which is a secondary product. And we'll meet him uh, in a later one, in the, in the production of urea. With a, you see, if you add the burette, the shape of the crystal varies, and uh, varies even more, increasing the concentration. And so that's, uh, that's how we do that. Uh, the burette, if you see a little, a second, uh, uh, it's like a dimer of urea. And so it's easy for, for the burette to be absorbed on the fast growing surface. And, uh, we can do the calculation, we find uh, things very similar to what we said before. It's only a bit slowed down because of the competition with the burette. But why, why there is this effect? The fact is that uh, if you look at the selectivity ratio, so the probability that the burette goes uh, on one surface on the other, this overwhelming in favor of uh, going into, into, into the uh, the fast growing is slowing its growth. Uh, so we, we can repeat the same thing using another molecule, acetone, and then nothing happens. Okay. Uh, so that's with one simple molecule, but can we now be more flexible? And maybe change also, not only adding stuff, but changing the solvent in which we make uh, the experiment. And uh, for doing that, we have to recall ourselves uh, that uh, the, these are phenomena which are uh, kinetically driven. They are not uh, equilibrium driven. And so the, the, the shape uh, of the crystal can be calculated with a formula which is very similar to the uh, to the Wolf construction. So you have to, uh, if you look at the crystal shape like that, uh, with three phases, uh, uh, the distance from the center are inversely proportional to the velocity of growth. So there is, uh, uh, so for doing that, we have to get uh, a hand on, on first, okay. So before we go that, I forgot, uh, that, uh, uh, okay, so on the basis of the construction, we can build a phase diagram for the shape of urea. And uh, this is purely geometric. And uh, since they depend on the velocity, and the shape depends only on the ratio between the velocity, we'll plot uh, the thing in this axis. So, and we explore all the possible, uh, all the possible shape I can form, and if I move there, I make the one, 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 zero, throw, 
This I make the one, one, one uh, slow, and so on. So we start over here, that's uh, what we know very well. So if we uh, move in this direction, the one, one, one becomes slower. First it was not totally absent, and now it appears. Then we uh, add, the, uh, then it, this other, and so on and so forth. You can go in detail and see that uh, there is a very large uh, variety of shapes uh, like this. So, with one simple urea crystal, you can create uh, a zoo of, of, of structures. Okay, so, so that's the geometry. Now, let's see, oh, more. So we, we need to calculate the phase growth speed. And so for D, we need a model for the velocity. And we write uh, this uh, in, uh, in, in a term, which is uh, phase independent, right? represent the diffusion of the molecule and a barrier to the formation of a, of, of, a, of a new layer. So this is something which we can calculate with metadynamics. And since uh, the ratio is important, uh, this prefactor doesn't matter. And that's uh, how, how a thing looks like. Uh, so we have a parameter which, uh, by which we control uh, the number of uh, crystal uh, a layer that are formed. So this would be the equilibrium situation. Uh, we, uh, here we go towards uh, uh, unsaturated, undersaturated. Here we go towards the supersaturated. And from this barrier, we can get, uh, can get uh, all, all, the, all the thing. So let me go. Skip that. Uh, and uh, now we, we see what uh, our theory predicts. Uh, theory and experiment. So we are here. One, that's water, needle, and needle experimental. Oops. Uh, ethanol which would be here, the one, one, one phase appears. We go here. Ah, sorry. And uh, this things, four, and, and so on and so forth. And we can also calculate how the B rate affects the growth. And our piece of resistance is, of course, uh, this angle uh, the here where we can go all the way from sticks uh, to tetraid uh, pyramids. And uh, we are very happy about it. Now, the last uh, uh, few minutes of my talk, I will discuss uh, the paper that uh, the Mr. Chairman has alluded to. And uh, metadynamics is a method for sampling, sampling difficult uh, situation, getting free energy, getting entropies, and so on and so forth. But how about dynamics? So that's what, where, where we started from. Can we use the metadynamics run to, extract, to obtain dynamical information? And for doing that, we'll base ourselves on some, uh, uh, on some observation that has been made in the past by Helmut Grudmuller uh, and Art Water some time ago at different times. Namely, suppose you have a barrier and you go like in this island, in the Vestai from beta to alpha. And uh, you fill this well here, yeah? and uh, fill this well, but you don't touch uh, the transition state. So everything is filled. So, so the effective barrier will be much smaller, but uh, the transition state is not that. So we can use uh, theory that are around for calculating the rate of going from B to A. And this is basically generalized transition state theory. And uh, with, without metadynamics, uh, what happens? I, have, uh, I can write uh, Z, which is the partition function of this object. Then I have a numerator, which is the partition function of the transition state. And I can allow with this transmission coefficient, which is, a, is the probability that uh, it can recross over here, which uh, depends, uh, again, on the transition state region. Now, let's imagine we do the same with metadynamics. But now, with the metadynamics in which uh, I've been careful, 
I'm not being careful with this. <laughs> okay. No, because when you touch the red, it's very easy to touch also, also the other thing. So I'll use my fingers, it's better. Okay, so now that. So let's calculate the same rate with the metadynamics. Since nothing has been done in the transition state uh, with metadynamics where I don't do anything, then this partition function of the transition state uh, is not touched. K is not touched. What is touched is the partition function of beta because I've, I've used metadynamics. I've been filling, filling this well. But uh, the ratio, then I can calculate the ratio. So the numerator upstairs uh, and downstairs, uh, they are the same. So this ratio is given by the ratio of the partition function of this well uh, calculated with and without metadynamics. This is a typical thing that we know how to calculate with metadynamics. So what we have to do, and so if I know the rate in a metadynamics run, I can calculate the real rate. Uh, okay, so how, how do I make sure that when I do, because metadynamics, this, uh, this theory assumes that I know the transition state, which is not always the case, actually. Mo most of the time it's, it's not known. So how do we make sure that uh, in a metadynamics run, I don't touch uh, the transition state region? Okay. And uh, for doing that, uh, here I show a plot uh, of a so-called rare event, which is the situation in which I stay in a well, and then occasionally I go to another well. So that's how it occurs. And for our, I think this is from Alan in the peptide. He stays in one conformer and then plop, very suddenly, go into another conformer. Down and up, up and down. So, uh, the only important thing is that I don't do anything when I'm here. Huh? So that I, 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 I achieve by depositing my heels uh, very infrequently. So this is uh, like one picosecond. If I deposit my heels at uh, 10, 100 picosecond, the probability that you go here is very small and you can also check it. So in this way, I make sure that the transition state is not touched. The other thing that I have to be sure that uh, I, I can recognize uh, that the system is going from one well to the other, and uh, that's a, there is an indicator here. So when I go from one well to the other in a jump uh, like this, uh, the, the, the underlying uh, bias, uh, so I've never been there before, changes uh, uh, dramatically and uh, shows uh, a kink. So, very simple. Okay, so we did uh, Allen in the peptide and to calculate uh, these rates. And uh, if you go at uh, high temperature, I can do the calculation directly and I find a good agreement between new method and the other. When we go to low temperature, the molecular dynamics is not able to follow, but still we find points which lie on rate. And here you see what I was telling you. So this is for Alain de Peptide. It stays in one well. The, 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 the thing grows. Uh, the system realizes it's gone into the other conformer, kink, then it goes here. Again, founds the kink, and so on, and so forth. And uh, uh, we can look at the trajectory huh, that go over over the barrier, we don't know what the transition state is. But this system has been studied by Chandler collaborators, and they found that in order for the Allen in the peptide to change, not only the angle phi that we have studied, the phi and psi, but there is another dihedral angle down there that has to be in anticorrelation with phi. And uh, we haven't saved this information to the system, 
you see that there is this anti-correlation. So even if we know the transition state, we can determine correctly the way the system goes uh, from A to B. And uh, we can do, uh, now this is, uh, uh, we have become uh, very, very ambitious with that, looking at uh, uh, more complicated properties. Here the so-called K-off, so I have an uh, enzyme, I have a drug, I want to calculate the time it stays in the drug, uh, in, the, in the enzymatic center. This is called K-off, and this is, uh, uh, can be millisecond to hours, and uh, that's, uh, uh, that's a joke by another collaborator of mine that uh, indicates that this is possible, but uh, for this, oops, for this audience, I would go, like to go back uh, to the nucleation of the nucleation rates. And uh, which uh, we have done with two different uh, collective variables here. You see, it goes, uh, right? This is one second. Uh, it goes straight using two different collective variables. And when you go to very low undercooling, the the, 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 the way the system, uh, the mechanism of nucleation becomes uh, uh, totally different as we have seen, we are in this situation, and uh, also the activation energy changes a lot, and uh, if you, if you cool, it down, cool it down even more, you can calculate directly, so this is direct MD, this is our calculation, and so we get uh, all the physics right, and this slope had been uh, it's been studied uh, earlier on, and so I think we are doing we are doing fine. And so this is there's no limit to the ambition of things that you can do now. Hopefully, of course, we have a lot to learn. It's very new, and there will be many many traps along the way. I'm sure. Okay, so that's it, and thank you for your attention.